Okay, so now we have some numbers uh, for the conceptual problem that we were asked. So here we have uh, two blocks sitting on a frictionless surface, and then an external force of 10 newtons is applied. We want to find the contact force between the, the two blocks, and while we're at it, we could probably find the acceleration uh, of both the blocks as well. Um, so we are given the masses of, of the blocks, uh, 4.0 kilograms for mass 1 and 1.0 kilograms for mass 2. So the first thing that we should do is, is draw the free body diagrams for both. Okay, so we'll start with mass 1. So we're always going to have gravity. Now, um, we can label this F sub G. We want to make sure that we label that F sub G 1 so that we know that it's different um, from the force of gravity on the other block when we get to it. And then we'll have a normal force pointing up. Uh, to the right, we've got the applied force, which was just labeled F. So here I'll just call that, well, I'd like to have a subscript on it, so I'll call it uh, F sub P for pushing force. And then um, we know that because there's uh, the block in front of it, there's also going to be some kind of contact force there, so I'll call that F sub C. Okay, and then for mass 2, we're going to have a separate free body diagram. So remember that you only draw the forces that are acting on that object. So we have a force of gravity 2, normal force 2, and then uh, to the right, we don't have that pushing force because the person is only pushing uh, over here. Uh, they don't directly contact uh, mass 2. So this is going to be that contact force. Right? Block 2 is pushed by block 1. And then something that is, is not a, exactly standard, but that I like to do, is to put a little x uh, on the, the forces that are paired by Newton's third law. Right, so there's always going to be one pair uh, between uh, the two objects, and, and there's going to be a force in one diagram that's the same as the force in the other diagram. So you can see I already anticipated this by just calling that the contact force. That's going to be, have the same magnitude but points in opposite directions. Now, you don't want to get ahead of yourself and try and guess that this contact force you know, uh, might be somehow related to the pushing force. As you saw in the conceptual problem, that uh, we know that it's going to be less than the pushing force, but uh, we don't know um, exactly how it's related. Okay, so now... In this problem, I mean, for completeness, if we really wanted to do everything, uh, we could write the uh, net force in the vertical direction for both the, the boxes. But we know um, that, in this case, the force of gravity is going to be balanced out by the normal force uh, for block one. And then the same thing is going to be true for block two. Right? And we know that's, that's true because acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero. Right? The blocks aren't um, crashing through the table. They're not being launched up vertically off the table. Right? So the only acceleration is in the horizontal direction. Um, so since we don't really care what those forces are, I'm just going to going to skip and, and focus on the forces in the horizontal direction. So um, for uh, block one, the point of making the free body diagram is to write down our net force equation, right? So net F net on block one, we're going to have, okay, so everything that points, well, I didn't actually uh, choose coordinate axes, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, we know that we can use our standard one here, right? So the y direction is going to be upward and the positive x direction is to the right. So um, that's my choice, right? I could choose it the other way, but it makes sense to choose to the right here. Um, so I can say um, the pushing force is, po I write down with a positive sign because it points to the right. And for um, block one, the contact force points to the left, so I write it down with a minus sign. And then this isn't complete until I set it equal to ma, right? But we got to be careful. There's two different masses. So the mass here is the mass of that object. So it's uh, mass one, right? So that's... Uh, an equation that I that I have now, the net force equation on block one, the Newton's second law equation on block one. All right uh, now, we can do the same thing uh, for block two, F net two. Well, there's only one horizontal force, so that's just going to be the contact force, and that is um, pointing to the right, so I write it down with a positive sign. And then that's going to be equal to ma for block two, so that's mass two times the acceleration. Now, how do I know that the accelerations are the same? Or I, well, they better be the same, because I've, I've written it down with just a. But... Uh, they're the same acceleration uh, because the blocks are moving together. Right, so as you're pushing on the block, they both move at the same velocity at all times, so their accelerations are going to be the same. Okay, so one, uh, one strategy that I like to use is to solve both of these equations for the same unknown and then set them equal to each other. So I can see that equation 2 is already solved for FC. I'll go ahead and solve equation 1 for FC. So um, copy that equation down here. So um, I need to get FC by itself. So I'm going to subtract FP from both sides, and that's going to give me uh, negative FC is equal to M1A minus FP. Now, uh, I need to get rid of that minus sign, so I'll multiply both sides by minus 1, and that's going to give me FC is equal to um, negative M1A plus FP. So now, because uh, both of these equations are equal to set equal to FC, I know that uh, the other sides are equal to each other. So I can write down now M2A is equal to negative m1a plus fp. So now I have an equation where the only unknown is the acceleration. Right? And the acceleration wasn't asked for in this problem, but I can, uh, you know, it's interesting to know, and, and then I'll have a number for it, so I can go ahead and calculate that. Um, 
Okay, so first thing I need to do is get all of the terms that involve the acceleration on the same side. So I'll go ahead and add m1a to both sides. And that's going to give me um, m1a plus m2a is equal to fp. And uh, now I can factor out um, acceleration times m1 plus m2 is equal to fp. So now I'll divide both sides by m1 plus m2. And that'll give me acceleration is equal to the pushing force divided by the masses added together. So that's going to be 10 newtons was our given pushing force. And then m1 was 4 kilograms, m2 was 1 kilogram. So 10 divided by 5 is going to be 2.0 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go back to either one of the original equations to solve for the contact force. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, take the simpler looking equation, which was that Fc is equal to m2 times the acceleration. m2 was 1 kilogram, and the acceleration is 2.0 meters per second squared, so that's going to give me a contact force uh, of 2 newtons. Right, so, um, as we said, the, uh, this is going to be less than the pushing force, um, because otherwise the blocks would not be accelerating to the right. Okay, um, an alternative strategy that you could use to, to calculate the acceleration is if we go back to looking at M1 and M2, we could treat that as a single system. Right? We could say you know, that's like a single block and the only force pushing on it is the pushing force. So that, in that case, the net force would just be um, the, the pushing force, and the mass is m1 plus m2, and times the acceleration there. So this would be a, a way that you could calculate the acceleration uh, quickly, because we know everything in this equation except for the acceleration. So that would be treating uh, the two blocks together as a single system. So sometimes that's helpful. The, the setting up the two free body diagrams and doing the algebra that way uh, is always going to work, but if you can kind of see how this is uh, treated as a single system, then um, you know, that, that algebra is a, is a little bit easier, and you'll get the same, um, you should get the same answer. If you do, if you do the math correctly.